Hi guys, welcome back to Finding Tesoros, where we're gonna go explore places to find interesting things. My name is Ernesto, and in this video, we're gonna visit two of my favorite botanical gardens in Los Angeles. Los Angeles Arboretum is 127 acres, not only of botanical garden, but also historical site. You can purchase the tickets online, which are $15 for adults. Ticket. My wife printed the tickets, and all we had to do was place them in that electronic device. Very nice people working here, by the way. Okay. Okay. Once inside, we were welcomed by these beautiful residents. These are Indian pea fowls that made the Arboretum their home. They were imported from India in 1879 by Elias Baldwin, who owned this property back then. I learned that although the term peacocks is used when talking about this majestic animal, it's actually the males that are called peacocks, the females pea hens and the offsprings pea chicks. Being pea fowls, the correct name of the species. In here we can see an example of a male trying to get the female attention, deploying his master plan with the display of his charming plumage. The Arboretum is a great place to see the pea fowls in a natural setting. They're most active at noon and in the evening before flying up to the trees to be safe from predators. Let's take a look now at some of the different type of plants that they have at this huge botanical garden. This is the coach barn built in 1879 and designed by the architect Albert Bennett. It's one of the California historic landmarks. This Victorian style building housed Elias Baldwin private carriages and those of his guests. Elias Baldwin was a very powerful businessman that made a fortune in the 19th century. This is the house in which Baldwin lived after purchasing in 1875. As you can see, it is under major renovation this is another building designated California Historical Landmark. The Queen Anne Cottage is another of California Historic Landmark. And right now we don't have access inside, it's all fenced up, but we can go around the perimeter. The Queen Anne Cottage was built a few years after the coach barn in 1885 and designed by the same architect. It's been speculated that Mr. Baldwin constructed it as a honeymoon gift to his wife, who was in fact the architect's daughter, Lily Bennett. Others think that he built it as a guest house without kitchen or dining room, but we all can agree that it's an architectural beauty. Next, we stop at the Rose Garden. The Arboretum is so big that you can easily spend four or five hours walking around. The Baldwin Lake not only has a nice and peaceful scenery, but also is home to many animals. Now we're heading to the exit to go see the second botanical garden, which is about four miles from here. Now we're at the Huntington, which is not only a botanical garden, but also a library and an art museum. Good morning, how are you? 
you must make a reservation online before coming to the Huntington since they do not sell tickets here. Tickets are $25 per adult. The Huntington is located in San Marino, California, and they have 120 acres of botanical gardens. The first garden that we're gonna see is the Desert Garden. The garden was created in the 1900s and is one of the largest and oldest collections of cacti, succulents, and other desert plants in the world. It has more than 2,000 species, some of them from extreme environments. The best time to visit is in spring, where you can see an amazing floral display. We're taking this giant bamboo path to go to the Japanese garden. The Japanese garden is a very peaceful and pleasant place. It's an example of Japan's unique landscape, like the Moon Bridge, one of the most popular spots in the whole botanical garden. And of course, the pond full of koi fish. There is also an authentic Japanese house created in Japan around 1904 and then transported to the state for a commercial garden. This five room house is currently close to the public, so we can only see the exterior part of it. We're gonna see now a collection of bonsai and hopefully we get lucky and talk to one of the curators. about people who do bonsai and the way I describe it is there are people who don't mind getting their hands dirty. You know, it's a very supportive community. We're all interested in, you know, making each other better. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really a nice group of people. Our bonsai collection uh, actually goes back um, to the 70s, but it was really in the mid 80s that a uh, a bigger push to expand the collection was, was done. And so um, uh, trees came as gifts to the local bonsai community. And since then, uh, we've grown. We have well over 500 pieces in our collection. After the Japanese garden, we stop at the Chinese garden, which is beautiful as well. This is a classical style Chinese garden with an elegant architecture and a distinctive landscape. It's called the Liu Fan Yuan or the Garden of Flowing Fragrance, which was inspired by the Garden of Su Zhao, a city in the southeast China. In the lingering clouds peak, you can enjoy this waterfall that actually has a path underneath. 
The rocks are a type of limestone imported from China and they represent the eternal, while the water the ever-changing. This is according to the curator, Jun Li. In there you can see the waveless boat that was inspired by the practice of Chinese painters who traveled by boats in the rivers to enjoy the scenery and then later captured that in their paintings. We're at the Rose Garden now. This three acre garden contains different individual plants that bloom in spring. There are no pea fowls at the Huntington, but you can see other animals like this bee, a rabbit, a Canada geese family, and this colorful blue bird, among many others. Hope you like this video about botanical gardens. By the way, which one do you like the most, Arboretum or Huntington? You can leave the comment down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next Friday.